Whenever someone does something wacky, like commit a mass shooting, something you'll inevitably hear from people that knew the perpetrator is that they seemed like a nice, normal guy, that there were no signs of their inner corruption. It's still a shock to me that it was him. Any evidence that this could possibly happen from this from this individual? Absolutely not. I never saw him as someone who would do something like that. He seemed like a pretty regular kid. Humanity's always pondered if there are a way to test someone's morality through religion, psychology, other such nonsense. Well, what if I were to tell you that there's already been a perfectly scientific litmus test that has already been posited on the internet's last reliable news source, 4chan.com? On May 8, 2020, a user from Estonia posted to the Chan boards this proposition. To return the shopping cart is an easy, convenient task, and one which we all recognize as the correct, appropriate thing to do. To return the shopping cart is objectively right. There are no situations other than dire emergencies in which a person is not able to return their cart. Simultaneously, it is not illegal to abandon your shopping cart. Therefore, the shopping cart presents itself as the apex example of whether a person will do what is right without being forced to do it. No one will punish you for not returning the shopping cart. No one will fine you or kill you for not returning the shopping cart. You gain nothing by returning the shopping cart. You must return the shopping cart out of the goodness of your own heart. You must return the shopping cart because it is the right thing to do. Because it is correct. A person who is unable to do this is no better than an animal, an absolute savage who can only be made to do what is right by threatening them with the law and the force that stands behind it. It's an interesting proposition, so I think it's time someone put it to the test. In the coming weeks, I'm going to pit two people against one another, one that returns their shopping cart and one that does not, with an opportunity to betray the trust of one another for personal gain. Could the answer to finding someone's morality be as simple as this? Well, let's test it out on the shopping cart theory. So you may be asking why I even care. Well, let's look at it like this. Number one, by returning the shopping cart, you are being courteous to everyone in the equation. You're being courteous to the employees for not having to go fetch the cart you abandoned, and you're not taking up a potential parking space or making an unnecessary obstacle in the parking lot. By not returning the shopping cart for your own convenience, you inconvenience many more people. It inconveniences shoppers by taking up parking spaces, it inconveniences the employees, and even sometimes if you don't return a shopping cart, it can lead to the carts being destroyed. For example, in winter, when a plow needs to clear snow from a parking lot, if there are shopping carts left out, they can end up being scooped up and shoveled into a snowbank. This can end up either damaging or ruining the carts or even the snowplow. At the end of the day, it's just simply the right thing to do. But don't take it from me, let's hear from some retail employees with their own opinions. Cool. What's your opinion on people that don't return shopping carts? It just seems kind of lazy. It's a little bit of annoying, because it's a risk to, like, cars being uh. What's your opinion on people that don't return shopping carts? Now regardless of that, it still might seem crazy and impetuous to say that these people are stupid, lazy, worthless, sociopath, scumbag monsters. I don't know where the hell you'd get that supposition, but you might be asking if this even affects me at all. Well, as a matter of fact, it really does affect me. And it affects you too. And it affects everyone that goes to the grocery store. Because of the endemic of people carelessly leaving their shopping carts littered around parking lots, many stores have introduced what I can really only describe as sanctions on their shopping carts to make things more difficult for the average customer. At Wegmans, there are triggers around the perimeter of the parking lot that will lock a cart's wheels if someone tries to take it beyond that point. Like those electric fences for dog shock collars. At Dollar Tree, they appear to have gone even more high-tech and welded giant poles to the carts that will hit the top of the entrance, among other things, preventing you from leaving the store with it. And most infamously, Aldi's gotten so sick of having to return the carts that these savages leave in parking lots that they need the consumer to return them by force. Every cart at Aldi requires you to deposit a quarter to unlock it. 
you return the cart, you get the quarterback. Here it is, working flawlessly. Because to these people, they're okay with sacrificing their sense of self and moral character by abandoning the shopping cart, but god forbid if they abandon the shopping cart and lose a quarter in the process. And even still, with these rules being put in place, whenever they're given the opportunity, they will still break them regardless. Take a look at any retail parking lot in the United States, and notice what you'll find. Loose shopping carts inches from their corrals, and you wonder why the person didn't bother to push it those few extra inches. Or alternatively, carts that are so damn far from the store that you have to wonder why it was worth the effort for them to move it so far to begin with. In my eyes, both of these people are equally insane. But I thought it'd be time to prove it. So how will I do that? With a British game show. Golden Balls was a game show produced by Endemol that aired in the United Kingdom from 2007 to 2011. In the game, players are randomly assigned golden balls with cash values in them. Some of the balls were revealed, and some of them weren't. The aim of the game was to eliminate players one by one throughout the rounds, kicking out the so-called killer balls and keeping the big money in play. What makes the game interesting is how players are put in a position to lie about their hand to advance in the game. You can say that one of your hidden balls is a high cash value, so that way you don't get voted off and eliminated. And yeah, this is simple bluffing, that's pretty okay, it's just a game. But the real morality test comes at the end of the show. The remaining two contestants are then made to build the cumulative jackpot, randomly choosing the remaining balls in play to keep and eliminate. And then in the final round comes the infamous Splitter Steal. Players are each given the choice to split with the other player or steal the jackpot for themselves. Each player makes this decision independently without knowing the decision of the other player until it's made. If both players select split, then they both leave with half the jackpot. If both players select steal, neither player leaves with anything. But if one player selects split, and one player chooses steal, then whoever chooses steal wins the entire jackpot, and then the other player goes home with nothing. Here's the situation. I'm posted up at the, uh, the parking lot adjacent to the Walmart I am staking out at. And seems like I'm just gonna have to wait. I've got myself a Wegman sub, and I'm just gonna be monitoring this parking lot here, see who does not return their shopping cart. Is that person gonna return it? Are they? And look at that, I think he's doing it. Is this guy gonna return his shopping cart? He nearly let it go flying. You gotta be careful with those things, that could dent someone's car. Okay, it seems he is returning the shopping cart. All right, I'm gonna be real with everyone here. It's been quite a bit. I don't. I didn't keep track of time. Uh, the camera's getting hot. Uh, sun's going down. I'm gonna do some on the scene sort of prowling there, try and find some people or even just carts. But amazingly, it seems that everyone I've been watching has been returning their carts. So either Auburn's a really nice place to be in, or maybe this endemic is exaggerated. Yeah, Auburn just must be a really nice place to live in. All right. After a fruitless day, I decided to change up my strategy and actually prowl with these animals. This proved to be a lot more successful. Though it may seem counterintuitive, the majority of shopping carts are actually abandoned closer to the building rather than farther from the building like you might expect. Hi. My name's. Your flashlight, sorry. Your oh, that's weird. That's weird. I'm sorry. I'm that Believe it or not, it was quite difficult to actually convince people to be part of my game show in a parking lot. I was beginning to lose confidence that my plan would work until suddenly. <laughs> Hey there! Hi, my name is Polly. I work with uh, Kagan Community College. I'm casting for a uh, game show. I was curious if you'd be interested in that. What kind of game show? What are you trying to do? It's a game show. It's like, um, it's a new format. You can win some money if you'd like to. I put my name down. Okay, perfect. Put your information down. Oh, you've got a pen already. Look at that. Yeah.
This is Brent Tracy II, who as you can see here is currently parked illegally and has an expired registration tag. Do you work with the police, or? Oh, not really. Okay, because <laughs> your registration's expired, so. <laughs> <laughs> no. Let's be honest, I almost sued the police. Ooh, I see, now you're parked in their spot? Yeah. A one-all. I kind of figured, you know what? Yeah, man? I need protection from them more than they can offer me, and I'm gonna take their spots. All right. <laughs> take care, my friend. Yes, I found my guy. With everything set, it's time to do my experiment. You heard you were interested in a game show. Hello. Hello, is this Brent Tracy? That's your calling. Hi. Hi there, this is, e this is Eli about the game show? Yeah, how are you? I'm doing well. I, I wanted to ask, I wanted to do like a quick 15 minute phone interview with you, if that's okay, if now is a good time. I was gonna say, can you call me back in a little bit? I just got into, into doing something. Okay, thank you. I'll call you back in a bit. Hey, let me ask you something. What's the interview? Like, what, what's the nature of the question? Um, just how old you are, um, if, just like some background check stuff, and you know, what occupation, just basic questions. Yeah, okay, uh, give me, what think? Can you give me like a solid, can I call you? Uh, yes. sure, yeah. Hey, give me, give me a little bit. I'll okay. call you, I mean, I just gotta get this stuff off my truck. Alright, I'll, I'll talk to you in a bit. Brent never called back, but we had arranged a date for him to meet up for the shoot. With everything put together, we were going to do a spectacular experiment. It was 30 minutes until the shoot, and everyone had arrived. Everyone except for Brent, of course. At this point, a growing anxiety emerged. This isn't good. If Brent doesn't show up, then we can't do our experiment. And unfortunately, that's exactly what happened. No call, no show. So while I can't tell you if Brent would have stolen or split the jackpot, I can tell you a little bit more about him. Brent Tracy II is the president of the Cayuga County Landlord Association, an organization of 61 landlords in Cayuga County with some of the most inconsistent politics I've ever seen. Posting graphics like these, and yes, this is the actual resolution in which it was posted, which criticized the amount of hours required for people to work to be able to afford rent, while at the same time, during the early stages of the pandemic, ignored the rent moratorium and insisted tenants continue to pay rent regardless. I'm sorry if it sounds like I'm getting too prejudicial too fast, but let's check out their fancy website to see if it clears things up. Oh, as it turns out, looking at their Google Reviews page, the Cayuga County Landlord Association is quite infamous for not returning its calls. In 2019, Brent Tracy II attempted to run for mayor of Auburn in the Republican mayoral primary race. He sprouted up a Facebook page which is populated by completely incomprehensible posts about homeless people and tenants like, here, let's have a look. Homelessness is a county issue. Let's pass a law requiring the county to pay Auburn for an extra cop for every 12 homeless placed in the city. I didn't get a very good understanding of his politics, which is ideal for a political candidate's Facebook page, so I checked out his appearance on the local public television show Candidates Forum, which is actually filmed at Cayuga Community College. Mr. Tracy, you have two minutes. Welcome. Thank you. Hi, I'm Brett Tracy, and I'm running as your endorsed candidate by the Libertarian Party for Mayor in the City of Auburn. My goal is to reclaim Auburn as a place where anyone can see opportunity and a better future. I thank you all for having me with you this evening, and I hope to bring something meaningful to the table. The people see a stacking list of issues facing our city. Young people are disproportionately affected by addiction. Safe, productive activities for kids are significantly lacking, and the successful young people live, leave for jobs and a life of economic opportunity elsewhere to feel heard and to see and to see change because of his hometown. With a silver ton like that, it's amazing he lost. Oh, and in case you were wondering why Brent thought about suing the police department, let's be honest, I almost sued the police. It's because he was arrested. According to court records, in January 2019, officers arrived at his house in response to a noise complaint regarding loud music, with neighbors reporting that they could hear it up the street. Officers had been previously dispatched to this location on three separate occasions asking Brent to turn down the music. Brent didn't cooperate, and so when they showed up to arrest him, he pulled away from the officers and refused to settle down. It took three officers to put cuffs on him. Now Brent claims that he was entirely unresistant and that he has security footage to back this up. 
The security footage is nowhere to be found, but I guess we'll just have to take his word for it. Because he can't be that bad of a guy, right? Oh, apparently this isn't even his first rap. Brent was previously arrested in September of 2018, being charged with endangering the welfare of a child. According to the police report, Brent had driven over to someone's house to violently engage with them, while he had a child in the car. It's important to note that all of this is alleged, and according to Brent, none of these allegations are true, and the police of Auburn are just bullying him for absolutely no reason. I'm not going to make an implication as to which narrative is more likely, I'm just going to say that really couldn't have happened to a nicer guy. We will never know if Brett Tracy would have split or stolen at the game, but one thing we know for certain is that he didn't return his card. The allegations made against him may not be true, but honestly, seeing as he's someone that both abandons his obligations and abandons his carts, makes him someone I want to be nothing like. Turn your fucking carts. Alright, cut. Cool. Nice, nice.